Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Shpali Asati, PGJR2 of Department of Radio Diagnosis in Muzaffar Nagar Medical College and Hospital, is presenting paper on the topic Role of MRI Brain in Evaluation of Children with Developmental Delay. Introduction Development is a continuous process that begins in utero and progresses until maturity. This process involves structural and functional stages of progress or growth. Developmental delay is a defined as significant delay in one or more developmental domains of children. Evaluation of childhood developmental delay is essential as it allows for early diagnosis and treatment and helps in counseling parents regarding the outcome of their child and to identify any possible risk of recurrence. Neuroimaging, preferably MRI of the brain, should be obtained when specific clinical indicators are present. MRI is an essential tool to diagnose the cause of delayed milestones. MRI aids in visualizing structural abnormalities and etiological causes of delayed milestones. The abnormal neurological findings were seen in 60 to 65 percent of the cases. The most common cause is hypoxic ischemic injury, and the second most crucial structure involved is corpus callosum. Structures that are systematically evaluated are ventricles, corpus callosum, ventricles, uh, gray and white matter, basal ganglia, brainstem, sedimentum. The aims and objectives of my paper are to study the role of MRI in evaluation of child with developmental delay, to identify the spectrum of abnormalities in children with developmental delay in MRI brain, to characterize the abnormalities based in age, etiological factors, and involved brain structures. Methods. There, this is a descriptive prospective study involving sample of 20 patients of 0 to 10 years who presented with developmental delay and are referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis. All those patients who are fulfilling the inclusion criteria in our uh, but um, enrolled. After proper explanation of the procedure and the purpose of the procedure, written informed consent was obtained from the patient. All the children were properly sedated during neuro, before the neuroimaging. The patient was placed in supine position and the head is placed securely in receiver coil. Brain MR images were obtained using semen magnetome essence of 1.5 Tesla MR machine using CZ protocol. Routine sequences were acquired that is axial, coronal, societal T1, T2, flare, DWI, ADC and post contrast T1 weighted sequences. The representative cases, my first case was of one year female child presented with seizures and delayed cry. In this T1 weighted and T2 weighted actual scan MRI, the, there is prominence of the subarachnoid spaces in the bilateral cerebral hemispheres with mild prominence of the bilateral lateral ventricles. The possibility of mild cerebral atrophy with paucity of the white matter in the periventricular region and the centrum semi oval And there is also, there was thinning of corpus callosum, mainly of splenum, likely periventricular leukomania. In my second case, this is our three-month female child presented with seizures. In this T1 weighted and T2 weighted uh, scans, sorry, uh, T1 and flare sequences, in this T1, there is T1 and flare hypointensities noted in the bilateral centrum semi oval and bilateral coronal radiator region, likely old ischemic insult. In my case, three is of a nine-month male child presented with developmental delay. In this T2 weighted and T1 weighted actual scans, there were multiple there is multiple linear alternate hypo and hyper intense bands involving the white matter, but predominantly in the bilateral periventricular regions and centrum semiwave, radiating perpendicularly from periventricular margins, demonstrating tigroid pattern. The differential diagnosis is of metachromatic leukodystrophy. In my case fourth, this is of a four-year male child, female child. Presented with delayed milestones and delayed cry. In this, there was a CSF intensity extra axial cyst in the left frontal region, likely arachnoid cyst. In the case fifth, this is of a six month male child presented with seizures and developmental delay. This is of a T2 weighted and um, this is a GRA sequence. In this T2 weighted, there is a hyper intense lesion, well defined hyper intense lesion in the bilateral basal ganglia. And in this, there is a central GRA hypo intensity in the lesion. Differential diagnosis is of metabolic encephalopathy. In my case, 6 is of a 3 year female child presented with seizures or developmental delay. In this T2 weighted flare and T2 sad section, there is symmetrical focal atrophy of the bilateral parieto occipital regions. And there is abnormal T2 flare hyper intensities in bilateral cerebral hemispheres and thinning of corpus callosum sequelae of HIE. In my case 7, this is of a 1.5 year male child presented with complaints of global developmental delay. In this sagittal T2 and T1 weighted uh, image uh, sad sections, there is non-visualization of the body and the splenium of the corpus callosum, likely partial agenesis of the corpus callosum. 
In the same patient, the, the occipital horns of the lateral, bilateral lateral ventricles were grossly dilated, but the anterior horns body and the temporal horns of the lateral ventricles are not dilated, as well as the third and fourth ventricle were also not dilated. Likely, the diagnosis is of corpocephaly. So the observation and results of my paper presentation is our study involved the evaluation of 20 children of age 0 to 10 years who presented with developmental delay. The study revealed that a significant number, that is 7, of children presented with developmental delay in age less than 1 year, 4 for uh, their in the age group of in each 1 to 2 years, 3 to 5, 6 to 8 years, and only one child was in the age group of 9 to 10 years. The study revealed abnormal MRI finding in significant 6 number of children in age less than 1 year, that is 6 children presented with abnormal MRI findings, 3 children and two children in one to two years and six to eight years each, and only one child in age group of nine to 10 years presented with abnormal MRI findings. The MR images were evaluated in detail in regard to various structures involved in our study. The corpus callosum was involved in 35% of the cases, basal ganglia in 15, white matter uh, involvement is of 25% of cases, and ventricles in 20% of the cases. This uh, same chart is shown in this. The prevalence of abnormal MRI finding was in 70% of the cases in the evaluated patients. Only the 30% patients out of uh, 20 patients were normal. So the discussion of this paper is the developmental delay has multiple etiologies, many of which cannot be diagnosed without the use of neuroimaging, such as the degree of perinatal hypoxic insult and the structural brain abnormalities. Our studies showed that the prevalence of abnormal MRI findings in the brain were in 70% of the patients. And similar prevalence rate has been reported in these following studies. Most of the children with abnormal MRI findings were in the age group of one year or less, and females were slightly more in number than males. In 14 cases of our study, there was abnormal MRI findings, and the anatomical structures were, uh, were evaluated. So conclusion of our study is MRI evaluation of the brain contributes to diagnosis of etiologies of developmental delay. Clinical diagnosis for, of the developmental delay should not be the only endpoint. MRI is the best investigation with a high yield in such developmental delay patients. For the serial sequential MRI may be necessary to ascertain disease progression. Advances in MR imaging, that is functional MRI, MR spectroscopy, DTI, and tractography, especially in structural and normal brain of such children, should provide more yielding information. These are my references. Thank you.